Hello, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel, I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident bagpiper. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share your comments below. I'd love to hear from you about all the stuff we're going to be dealing with today. And what are we dealing with today? We are going to be tying into a McKillop Bagpipe Company Goatskin Pipe Bag. If you've been watching any of my videos, you've probably seen this hanging on the wall behind me in some of the shots. I'm uh, finally going to take the plunge today and tie into it. This is going to be a multi-part series of videos so that not any one of them is too long. We're going to start, though, with measuring out where to put your marks on the bag before you cut it. Because if you get a traditional goat or sheepskin bag and even some cowhide bags, they often have no pre-cut holes. And it's going to be up to you to put the holes in the bag. Now, if you see on this bag right here, I already have it pre-marked. I've already put some marks on here. These are kind of an experiment. I actually put my bag cover that was designed for a uh, Banatine medium synthetic bag by uh, bagpipecovers.com. I put it over this bag and it fit very snugly. It fit very nicely over this. And I just put these X's in the center of where the um, sleeves were on the pipe bag. I wanted to see if just perhaps they matched up with the instructions that I've always used in the past when I tied in that I, from the old school red uh, Highland Bagpipe Tutor book here. So we're going to take a look and compare how these marks go with these. So in step one, we're going to lay the bag flat as we see here. And then the next step is we're going to fold the bag in half. And I like to have just maybe, maybe just slightly more than half, a little bit more of the nose out. I can see when I do that, that mark is right where it needs to be. So we're off to a great start with that. But if you haven't marked your bag yet, that's where you're going to want to do it. Overlap the bag, have just maybe a little bit of the nose, especially if it's got a little bit of a downturn, a, uh, you know, a swan neck, maybe just a little over, and find that midway point and put a mark on there. Then from there, we are going to want to grab a ruler, have a Sharpie ready. I'm going to go with blue, and we're going to compare how close the marks I made from the bag cover were with the actual instructions. All right, so we've marked that point, And in this, we're going to go ahead and call this point B. So I'm going to put a B next to that first mark we did. That's point B, according to, uh, to the book here. All right. From here, we're going to go straight down. And the bag is facing this way. OK, and let's put that so I can see the mark. We're going to go down three inches from there. And three quarters of an inch, so we'll put a little dot there, and then three quarters of an inch this way. So it's pretty close. So I went down three inches from where I marked and up three quarters of an inch. You can see the red circle is where it would be perfectly centered on the bag cover, and the blue circle, or the blue X, I said I think circle, right? the blue X is where the actual measurements from this book are going. I'm most likely going to use the blue marking. I've always used these before. It's never failed me. All right, we're going to go ahead and... What are we supposed to label that? We're going to label that one C. All right, so next we're going to turn the bag over and do something very similar. We're going to go down three inches again from the top and over three quarters of an inch. And sure enough, man alive. This one's really close. Let me go ahead and hold it up to the camera here. You see the red one's just ever so slightly forward of the actual marks from the, again, College of Piping tutor book here. So they say to label this one D, so we'll go ahead and do that, D. Okay, and all the marks, if you did want to keep your bag nice and pretty, these little dots are probably going to be covered up by the actual wrapping and everything else. Um, but most people put a bag cover over their bag anyway, so it's, it's no biggie. For the blowpipe fitting, we're going to take the end of the opening here, and we're going to fold it over so that it lines up with C. And we're going to put just a little tiny dot of a mark right at that fold. Boom. So we know where that's at. And then from there, we are going to measure down three quarters of an inch. So now 
we have the pipe bag measured and ready to be cut. So this is where things get exciting. There are a number of ways you can go about cutting into one of these bags, but understand you get one chance at this and one chance only. Some people use just a super sharp knife and something underneath. I use a wooden spoon myself, um, but I don't use the knife. I don't make the star pattern. For years, I actually used just a, uh, a one inch copper fitting that I got at like Lowe's or Home Depot that I had uh, ground to be sharp, but it's cut enough bags, it's not sharp anymore. And rather going, than going through the pain of this, I just found a one inch punch on uh, Amazon for about 20 bucks. I thought 20 bucks was worth my time and this is gonna stay sharper longer. I realized a little late in the game that the stocks on this set of pipes were far wider than any other set of pipes I'd ever tied into a hide bag and that that one inch punch was a little too small in diameter compared to the stocks. It ended up being almost a half inch off from the base of my stocks and when I went to push the stocks through, even on a moistened bag, which we'll talk about here uh, in a, probably another video, they still tore just a little bit. That being said, I was able to get a perfectly good tie-in. It's airtight and it's working great. But if you wanna make sure that you're not tearing your bag when you push the stocks through, I'd get a punch that is maybe a quarter inch smaller than the stock is at the base, not a half inch. The leather's not gonna stretch that far, at least it didn't in this case. So, back to the video. So, we're gonna go ahead and put work this spoon in. And I've gone back and forth on which one I um, use, whether I use this side or the, the convex or the concave side. I'm not sure it matters. I'm gonna work that spoon in and I'm gonna get it right behind where we're gonna put the first hole. So there you can see the spoon inside the bag. And again, I'm gonna be going right over the blue X and D. And I can see that that's all lined up. And this hunt punch is really nice. Um, it's actually nicer than this because I can look right through it and see that I am centered very nicely over that X and that D. And I'm just going to now push and rotate and start cutting through this. And there we go. We have our first hole for our outside tenor. And it readily came out, that was nice. All right, so we have one hole in the bag. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the middle tenor. That's the one in the least dispute. I'm gonna go ahead and use the concave side of the spoon now. And now you can see I'm actually using that hole to help me align the spoon. I have access to the inside of the bag now. This is a sealed bag. There's no zipper or other sort of access. So one less thing to fail is one way to think about it. And again, I'm gonna center it right over the letter. I can see the letter perfectly centered. Spoon move just a little. There we go. Centered over the letter, and now start cutting in. Other people use a flat piece of wood. I'm sure that would work better. I don't have a flat piece of wood that's the right size, so I'm using my wooden spoon here. So this is one of those skills I often compare it to like tiling a floor in the kitchen. I've done this quite a few times. I would say the better part of 20, maybe 30. But that being said, a year or two goes by. I'll probably tie in two or three bags in a year, one year, and then a couple years goes by without me tying in any. So I don't want to say it's a perishable skill, but you forget some of the little nuances sometimes and you have to be reminded. I'm going to go grab a sharp knife real quick. I'll be right back so I can get finish cutting the rest of that out. All right, so I've got a sharp knife here. Just gonna use it to assist me to get through the last little bit of leather in the back here where my punch doesn't seem to wanna go through. Again, knife on bag, be very careful. No extra holes, people. 
And there we go. Disc number two. We have two openings in the bag now. Now we're ready to move on to the base. And again, I'm going to use the blue mark I made, not the red mark, because I know it works and works well. I think I had more luck on the convex side of the spoon rather than the concave side of the spoon. So again, I'm gonna see if I can put this in the camera. I don't know if I can, but can you see that? There we go. Like I can see that that X is right in the middle of the punch. So this punch is nice to be able to see through like that. If you have some sort of L or T-shaped tool that you've used, you're gonna have to just hope. You could probably make some measurements on there. This is just quite a bit easier, I like it. All right, there we go. Perfect. Okay, third hole out. All right, so the drones are ready. I'm gonna go ahead and use the blue X, the one I know that's gonna work. That is halfway between the two. All right, here goes nothing. Boom, there we go. We have a hole now for the blowpipe. So that's how you measure out a bag and that's how you uh, can go about cutting the holes. So that's gonna be part one. In the next step, we're going to actually start the tie-in process for the stocks, uh, for the drone stocks and how we prepare those and do all of that stuff, but that's in part two. So in any case, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper. If you found this useful, please, Thumbs up uh, the video here, subscribe to the channel, and uh, comment below with your technique. I think uh, it's about time for me to retire this spoon, maybe get something a little flatter for uh, the next time. But as I said, this is a skill I'm kind of relearning as we're doing it. So in any case, I'll see you next time. Cheers, everybody. Mm -hmm.